Welcome to Splash Games. Today I'm going to show you my game room. Let's play! I'm going to do this video in two parts. First I'm going to give you a little tour of the room and then I'm gonna go through all my games. I'm just so excited to show you my game room. We've been working on it for about a year and it's almost totally done. And as you can tell, it's not a super masculine game room. You won't see one miniature in here. <laughs> I just wanted to make it sort of girly and fun. And yeah, we don't play big games in here, we play them out in our front room. I have a, I have a big huge table out there that we can we use for the bigger games. And in here we just play cards and Crokinole and yeah, some of the smaller games, so. Okay, so this is a sign my friend made me. It has me and my husband's names and our last name Blair and then all my kids. I thought it was really cool. I used to play Scrabble with my dad a lot, so it's pretty cool. I put it behind the door, but it's okay because I have a glass door and it still shows. Up on top of the shelves here, I have dice and decks, which has all my uh, extra dice and just plain old decks of cards in it. And then I have bands, boxes, and bags, which has all my rubber bands, my storage boxes and bags all go in there for my game supplies. And then the last box is all my dry erase markers and just a bunch of miscellaneous like extra pieces I find that I don't know where they go, timers and stuff like that. So I have all my signs. I got some cute tacks and ribbon and I just kind of taped them on the back. And then I cricketed each section of what the games are. So yeah, I think they turned out pretty cute. Okay, here's my shelf with all my card games and stuff. I have my, a few games and then my best friend Andrea gave me this which has all my score pads and stuff in it. Really love that. Anytime I need to keep score, I just go into there. Up here is some of my photography. Uh, Yellow had a contest for their calendars, a photo contest where you had to use a piece of their games. So I took their Gigazar from King of Tokyo and I took it in front of the Golden Gate and that won the cover of the calendar. And then Mysterious Forest, I just took a little piece and took it over to our park and that turned out really cool. So I won like $250 of Yellow Games, like this one, Bunny Kingdom, and a bunch more, so that was super exciting. Okay, so over here I have my play mats. I have uh, Splendor, Century, Chess, uh, Equinox. It's a big, huge play mat. I have just a plain play mat and Atlantis Rising. I'm waiting for my Knit of a Lear play mat. Hopefully that'll come soon. Over here I just have some dice out. Because of COVID in 2020, they didn't have Gen Con. So they had Gen Con online, and I was lucky enough to win the Arboretum tournament. So I got this really cool trophy, and I won a big gift card from Renegade Games, and I love Renegade Games, so yeah, that was pretty cool. I have my clock and my awesome timer. Over here is my area for reading my game rules and watching game playthroughs. I have these coasters. Can you guess what games they're from? Put them in the comments. These are from some of my favorite games. I, my husband cut out these circles and I just hodgepodge these pictures on. I thought they turned out super cool. <laughs> so yeah. Over here, we have my our top 10 list. These are all our top 10 games, mine and my husband's, and my husband made this for me. I wanted a board that I could change out our top favorite games. As you can see in here, I have all the letters that I cricketed. Um, so we can change out our games. I think there is gonna be a change in our top 10 list because we got some new games, we got, um, Terraforming Mars and Arnak that'll probably end up going on here. So <laughs> this does need to be updated. Okay, over here, this is probably one of my favorite areas. I'm not see sure if you can see what this says on it, 
but it's C. DeLucia. It's Carmen DeLucia, my great-grandfather, the 7th of June, 1914. He made this cribbage board, which has on the inside cards and, yeah, pretty cool stuff and all the pieces inside. And then my other great-grandpa built mirrors, and you can see up on the top here it's sort of cut out. <laughs> I think this just was a mirror he threw together, but it's pretty cool. This section is the game of the week. My son wanted to have a game of the week so that we could play it a bunch because usually we'll play a game once and not play it for a while. Um, he left to Guatemala. <laughs> He's on a mission for our church. So yeah, we've had Jamaica up here for a while. <laughs> so we need to play it. I found this sign at Hobby Lobby and I painted over it. It had like something else on the other side. Don't forget to be awesome on this side and something else on this side. I can't remember what it was, but I sanded it down and I cricketed Game of the Week on there. And yeah, I thought it turned out pretty cool. Okay, up here we have some other games and puzzles. Um, and our Pitch Car, Blair Family Pitch Car Champion Award. Every year, right before Christmas, we do a pitch car championship and they get a, a plaque on the trophy. My son-in-law won this year, so it should be at their house, but I haven't put the plaque on yet. So once I get the plaque updated, I'll give it to them. So this will not be here, um, but maybe next year I'll win and it will be back again. <laughs> and that's the pitch car championship. Up here I have my Babe Cave sign and down here I have my Game Canopy which is how I travel with all my games. It is really amazing. Now for my amazing table. Um, this is a playmat like a D&D Arctic playmat and it's getting kind of dirty. I wanted it light to go with the room but I'm not sure how to deal with the dirt on it because when we play games and it gets dry erase markers and stuff on it, it doesn't clean up too well, but my husband made it and it comes off to reveal my croconole. You can see the inside of this, how he kind of made it. We put felt right here so it wouldn't scratch the croconole table. And then he just did a circular, it's super light too, so we could just lift it off really easy and put it in the closet if we want. We do a lot of croconole playing in tournaments here. Um, so here's the table. We have the cup holders down here. And these are the scorekeepers. So my husband drilled these in for me and I cricketed the scores on so you can keep score of the game. Um, and you put your 20s on these flowers. And yeah, because I didn't want my croconole table moving ever, my croconole board, because it was so expensive. So yeah, it just stays here all the time. And yeah, my husband was awesome. Okay, we found this, we found this table across the street. The neighbors were getting rid of it, and I'm like, can I use that for my croconole table? So he added legs to it and put the cup holders on for me and drilled holes for the scorekeeping. And and this is for my incredible light that I have. I got it from Amazon. I wanted a fan light, but I don't like the look of fans. So I got one with a hidden fan, which was really amazing. So even with the fan on, you can't hardly see it, but it gets pretty hot in here during the summer. So we really needed a fan in here, but I wanted one that looked really good. So yeah, found that on Amazon. That was pretty cool. Okay, the chairs that I have, I got also from Amazon um, and they're spinnable and they raise up and down, which works really well for this table because sometimes you're higher when you're playing games and you're lower when you're playing croconole. So yeah, they work really well and they're super comfy. section is set collection and uh, so Citadels I like because it's eight player it's an eight player super fun family style game I think most of my games are family style because I usually don't have games that are more than an hour I don't like heavier games but yeah Citadels I like it because it's eight player CV is like the game of life um, 
So that's super fun, but it's with dice and cards instead of a board. Knit of Valir is on my top 10 list. Um, I have Thing of Valir, the expansion, but I haven't played the expansion yet, but uh, I love Knit of Valir. Uh, everybody I teach buys it. Now we're going to our Euro Light and other other games that don't fit in like any topic. So Honga I just got for Christmas and it's super fun. The, you gotta feed the tiger and yeah, it's just a really fun game. Kruba is also from Haba and it has a path that you travel through to get to pyramids and collect treasures. I love the strategy of it. Tiki Topple, you either hate it or you love it. I love it. My husband hates it. Um, yeah, just the, I usually bring this when it's people that don't know games that well because it's just super easy to teach. Century, I love the Gollum edition. It's just prettier than the Spice Road version. I love the gems in it and I like that it only has three things you can do on your turn. It makes it super easy and fast. King of Tokyo. Everybody should own this game. This is one of the first Euro games I got. It should probably be over in the battle section instead of here. But yeah, my kids and us love that game. Tiny Epic Blast Off, Tiny Epic Galaxies. I wish Tiny Epic would make more games like this. They, this is like the simpler version of their galaxies and their games are a little too heavy for me. So I hope they're gonna make more simplified versions of their games. Um, Cause I just, we really love this game and I just love how light and simple it is, but still has some of the same cool mechanics that their other games have. Um, Sentient, it's a really puzzly game. My husband does not like Sentient, but I love the puzzle of it. Um, you're gonna notice on some of these games, I have uh, player aids. So I made a map for this because it really does need a board. So look below, I'll try and mention the games that I have player aids for. And one of these is, I'll put the board game mat down there so that you can download it because it just makes the game so much easier. Nuns on the Run, it's a hidden movement game. Uh, my board game group loves it. All the students are trying to sneak out at night and the nuns are trying to catch them. Yeah, super fun. Under Falling Skies, it's my one solo game that I own and whenever nobody will play a game with me, I'll get this out and my son will usually come and help me try and win it. Um, it's Battle in Space. Uh, it's amazing. The Castles of Tuscany. This is the simplified, kind of a simplified version of the Castles of Burgundy, which my husband likes a lot better. But I like Tuscany better. I like the simplification of it. And yeah, it's a great game. The only thing is, if you're losing, it's really hard to catch up. So that's the one thing I don't like about it. But it's a really fun game. We're still in your own light games. Uh, Take a Noko, such a beautiful game. A really cute panda and a gardener. The panda wants to eat the bamboo and the gardener wants to plant the bamboo. So yeah, that's really fun. Takaido's really beautiful. You travel through Japan. Yeah. Uh, just a really beautiful, fun game, Takaido. The Quats of Quedlinburg. It's super popular this last few years. Usually everybody I teach it goes and buys it. Um, I've made a little extra piece for you guys right here. It shows how to, what steps you need to do, but it's missing a few. So you can print out the little um, aid I have and just put it right there, which helps complete that. I'm not sure why they didn't just add the next two pictures, but I made it for you guys. So you can download that. Ticket to Ride, over a million sold. Yeah, you can tell ours is well used. Simple and fun. Black Fleet, I'm not sure why it doesn't get more buzz. It's super beautiful. Um, pirate game with beautiful pirate ships, super just beautiful graphics. Space Base is really good at that. Same with Via Nebula. Um, I just love the graphics of it and just a super fun, both of, both of them kind of pick up and deliver games. 
Okay, on to Dice Town. This is sort of like a party game a little bit, even though it's only five, two to five players. It's like dice rolling and visiting the wet, wild west town. The lame thing about it was it just had a card to be the sheriff, so I actually bought a sheriff badge and put it in there just to make it uh, a little more fun. Emotep, Builder of Egypt. A super easy uh, game of building up Emotep, Builder of Egypt. So, yeah, I love that game. Colt Express has an actual train where your people are moving up and down. You play cards to shoot at people, to punch people, to try and avoid the sheriff, right? Because you're robbing the train. I love that it's six or seven players. Potion Explosion, sort of like um, Candy Crush or a game app where you're grabbing marbles and trying to make them explode together. Bunny Kingdom. In Bunny Kingdom, you're building a kingdom of bunnies. There's a ton of bunnies in this, and it, the only thing missing is a player mat. So I've made one, look below, and you can download the player mat that it definitely, desperately needs. So yeah, check that out down below. Okay, on to our deck dice building games. Uh, first is Mystic Veil. Vale. Look at that cool graphic. Uh, it's a really beautiful game. And the cool thing about Mystic Veil vale is the cards are sort of empty and you build up the cards, which is really cool. You can make cards really powerful by putting them in the little clear envelope. Yeah, it's really beautiful and cool. Taverns of Tiefenhall. Uh, it's the sequel to Quacks. My husband likes it even more. Sometimes you just get a bad hand though when you're playing the game, but I just love the theme of it. Really great. T the Taverns of Teeth and Tall. Okay, my favorite game! <laughs> Dominion! It's amazing. I have the Seaside and Intrigue expansion. Once I get more expansions, I'll have to just put them all in one box, which will make me sad. But for now, I can fit my three boxes on here. Clank. Uh, you're building your deck to go down into the dungeon, try and avoid making too much noise because the dragon will come out. Yeah, fun game by Renegade. Aquatica. Oh, this game is so beautiful. Um, you're going down and adventuring. Yeah, oh, just such a great game. I just love how beautiful it is and I love the gameplay of it. Dice Forge, you're making, building your own dice. The dice um, covers snap off and you're making your dice more and more powerful. Yeah, really beautiful game and I love the dice forging. Pretty cool. Okay, now we're on to drafting games. Drafting means having a deck of cards, taking one, passing the rest to your neighbor. So these are all drafting games. I have Athenium, which if you love books, Athenium is the, it's Athenium Mystic Library. It's really beautiful and it's a super fun, easy game. Seven Wonders, you can tell ours is thrashed. We've played it so much. My husband hated it the first time we played it and I think most people don't like it the first time, but once you score it, and then play it again. The second time it's only a half hour and you understand the logistics of it. So if you've played it once and didn't like it, try it again. <laughs> um, and here we have Sushi Go Party. I think you can get Sushi Go at probably any store, but it's definitely worth buying the extra for Sushi Go Party because then you can interchange the cards. So yeah, it's a lot better game than Sushi Go, I think. Sagrada. What a beautiful game of stained glass windows. In this game, you're building your own stained glass window and putting uh, drafting dice to put in to decide how to make get the most points. Kind of a puzzly game, but I really love it. Okay, now we are on to Euro medium and heavy games. I don't really have heavy games because like I said, I don't like games that are more than an hour or so, but this is kind of as heavy as I get. <laughs> so here we go. 
Lexor, you are Indiana Jones going into the temple to get treasures. My husband just put this on his top 10 list. Uh, it's an older game, but yeah, super fun. Everdale, uh, one of the most beautiful games to come out recently. You're building a critter village. It seems like it would be maybe a kid's game, but it's not. It's pretty heavy, but we do love it. And I think it might be on my top 10. I'm not sure. Outlive. The world has been destroyed and you are a faction trying to forge as much as you can. I love the theme of it. You're going out and you're hunting and you're trying to scrape by and try and battle other factions that are out there. I love the game. Great Western Trail. A little too involved for me, but my husband really loves it. Small World. It probably should be over in the area control area. My kids really love this game. You get to be a really cool factions and try and take the world over. But the world is a lot smaller than it should be. And I'm not a huge fan, but my kids won't let me get rid of it. <laughs> they love it. Okay, Puerto Rico, an old classic where you are trying to sell goods and transport them. The Castles of Burgundy, also a he kind of heavier Euro game. I do love this game, but my husband always has it on his top 10. Istanbul, you are trying to get as many gems as you can by trading and yeah, love that game. Okay, now we're to the Catan section. We have Zarahemla, which is a version of Catan, exactly like Catan, but it does have temple building, but it's the Book of Mormon version. So if you love the Book of Mormon and the characters in it, it has, instead of knights, it has stripling warriors. Instead of the robber, it has Gadianton robbers. So yeah, it's a really cool version of Catan. I actually like it better than the regular Catan because it has the temple building and it has a score thing around, but you can't expand it, so. <laughs> And my husband loves Catan and Seafarers, so we have to keep that too. <laughs> so we have to keep both. The last medium heavy Euro is to call. It won the Spiel of the It. The complicated thing is you have 10 actions um, and it's kind of a long game. I looked on Board Game Geek and they had like a help, help to do a shorter game, which we play and we really like it. So yeah, it's fun. Okay, now on to the real-time co-op games. These are the fast, stressful games that you're all working together to complete. Escape, another Indiana Jones game where you're going into the temple trying to get all the treasure you can and escape within 10 minutes. It has an amazing soundtrack. And my son loves to make a dark room and get the soundtrack really loud and like have a flashlight over the table and just make it really dark and just really fun. He loves that game. Okay, Flatline and Fuse kind of go together. Fuse is the pre is the game and Flatline is the sequel. Fuse is on my top 10 list. It's just an amazing dice placement game trying to not get the bombs to explode and it's real time so you're hurrying as fast as you can. Flatline's a little more involved. You're trying to save the patients that were blown up by the by Fuse. <laughs> but it's still really fun. Magic Maze is a game where you're all trying to go in and rob them all and get out, but you cannot talk at all. It's one to eight, but I like exactly four players. To me, it's the most fun. But my son and I went through a bunch of the levels of it because it gets harder and harder and had a really fun doing it just us two. So. Heist is a really fun game. It's a little bit of dexterity where you're trying to push the right button at the right time and switch um, tools with everybody around you to try and rob the bank. And if you do, all the gold pops out at the end. So, and there's a bunch of different levels. And if you make it through level five, level six appears, which we have never got to yet, <laughs> but it is there. Okay, now we're on to just our regular co-op section. Um, we've got Castle Panic, where you're all trying to save your castle from all the orcs and goblins that come and attack it. Then we have Burgle Brothers, 
where you're trying to rob a building and get out on the helicopter after, helicopter pad. Really fun. My husband and I love that. Flashpoint Fire Rescue, your fireman trying to save rescue people from a burning building. Hopefully you can save them all before the building explodes. Pandemic, probably the most popular of all of the co-op games. Uh, I love Pandemic, you're trying to rid the world of four different diseases. Uh, if you're starting into gaming, that's one that you should probably own. It's just uh, just a classic, amazing co-op game. Horrified. I love the theme of it. It's got the old, the old monsters that you're trying to rid the world of. The reason I like this game is because each time you play, you're facing different monsters. So sometimes you might be trying to get Frankenstein and his bride together. Or, you know, it's different mission for each, different m mission for each monster, so that's pretty cool. Chronicles of Crime, you're all working together to solve a crime. It's sort of an experience. You've got an app that helps you look for clues and you're going to talk to people and investigate. You're all investigators trying to solve this crime and how this person was killed. It's pretty dark, so it's not really for kids, but it is really fun. And our last co-op game is Atlantis Rising. The components in this are really amazing. You are trying to get off Atlantis before it sinks into the ocean, and you all have different powers, and yeah, what a really beautiful game. Now we're to the real-time competitive games. We've got Galaxy Trucker, where in real time you're trying as fast as you can to build your ship, and then after everyone builds your ship, you have to go through space and try and have your ship not totally destroyed by the end. So that's really fun. They just came out with a, a second edition, so darn, I have the old edition, but I'm really interested in getting the second edition of that. Going Going Gone is a bidding game. It's just a fast, furious, fun kind of game. Captain Sonar. Really amazing game, but I wouldn't play it unless you had exactly eight players. And I also wouldn't play it without my player aids. I have made player aids to go with each person so they exactly know what to do. And within 10 minutes, everybody will know exactly how to play. So make sure you go below and download the player aids that I made for Captain Sonar. It'll make the game and teaching it so much easier. Paramedics clear your paramedics and you're trying to save patients and sometimes they die But the graphics of it make it so it's just more of a fun kind of thing and not super serious But yeah, it's stressful, but stressful fun. <laughs> okay, stellar conflict Everybody is sh has ship cards with ships on them and you're trying to put your ships out and You use kind of rubber bands to use your laser to shoot other ships <laughs> It's kind of hard to explain unless you play it, but yeah, it's really fun. And it's super fast, so if you just need a fast game, you could play that. Flash 8. Uh, remember those games with numbers and squares? It's kind of like that, where you're pushing the things around, but you're trying to get the pattern before someone else. So yeah, that's a real fun one. And then down below is Pit. The old classic Pit, where you're bidding in the stock market and trying to get a set. We love Pit. Okay, now we're on to abstract strategy games. These are more puzzly type games. And the first one is Project L. I just love the pieces of Project L. They're so satisfying. <laughs> and you're just trying to fill up a board and it shapes. You have a board and you're trying to get the shapes to fill, in it, fill into it. Yeah, it's just really beautiful. Just a really easy game. Coetel is a fun game where you're trying to build a dragon. I've played it a few times and I thought I would like it more than I did, but I know a lot of people love it. Quirkle is a classic game where you're trying to put the shapes and colors together. Yeah, it's a fun one. I hate to get rid of it. Dragon Castle. This is oh, it's just such a beautiful game where you're building up tiles and trying to grab tiles to build temples. Yeah, it's just really pretty. Of course I have dominoes. It's the only game my daughter will play is Mexican Train. 
Azul. Now this game has just taken the world by storm. It's sold a lot of games. My family all loves it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Tile Lane game. Sagani is super fun. It's a game where you're trying to put tiles down and then put other tiles of the right colors down. Just a really fun and easy abstract strategy game. Okay, let's start with card games now. We've got Happy Salmon. I really need to get the blue salmon so that we could play. It's a real-time game where you stand up and try and get rid of all your cards. A lot of yelling and it takes like three minutes, but it's fun. You play it over and over. <laughs> Abandon all artichokes. Whoever gets rid of all their artichokes wins, which is really sad because I really love artichokes. <laughs> okay, then we come down to our social deduction games. I do not like social deduction games actually, but my kids love them and my board game group loves them. So here we go. Uh, the resistance, two teams and if you're on the resistance, then you want the resistance to win, and if not, you want the, you know, the other team to win. One Night Ultimate Werewolf. It's werewolf, but in one night, a really quick round, and then you just play it over and over. Bing the Dice Game is probably my favorite social deduction game. Um, it's not as much lying. It's just kind of hiding your identity, and it plays up to eight players, which is really nice. Bing the the game is super involved and I always hated teaching it because it had so many rules, but being the dice game, so much better. Dinner, Donner Dinner Party. Um, I just got this from my brother so I haven't played it. I think the kids played it and they really liked it, but I haven't tried it yet. And Secret Hitler, my son's favorite game. Um, and yeah, he got that for Christmas. They all love that game. Trick taking games, where you're putting cars down and trying to win the trick. Niet is super fun. The game rules kind of change every time and everybody bids on what they want the game rules to be. Uh, it plays, I think, two to four, two to five, but I think it's only good with four players. Rook, my favorite game in the world to play. It would be on my top 10, but I only like playing it with my siblings. So yeah, I love that. And Potato Man. A simple, easy, trick-taking, fun game. Okay, now we go to Cards Co-op. Um, the Mind, which ours is kind of thrashed. We play it so much. I just take it anywhere, and you can teach anyone that game in one second. And, yeah, super fun. The Crew, I've played a few rounds. We started playing it with our friends, and I really want to get back to it. Um, so fun co-op game. Here's my escape games. I need a sign for it and I don't have one. <laughs> but yeah. Um, exit and unlock. I like exit the best. Um, but unlock is you can give away to other people because it's not ruined. So yeah. Exit, you tear the box and ruin every, tear up the rules so you can only play them once. They're one time play games. Okay, all my other card games. Silver. Look at those graphics. Amazing. My boys love this game and play a lot when their friends come over. It's sort of like golf where you're trying to get rid of all your cards, if you've ever played that. Okay, we have Point Salad, which I play a lot. We were just playing the other night. Um, just a simple game of, yeah. <laughs> it's just a favorite of mine. Daya Monsters, a fun game with monsters made by the Machikuro people. So I got that for my son for Christmas. For sale, you're buying properties. My kids love the game. I just don't like it that much. And same with Bonanza. My daughter was saying the other day, why haven't we played the bean game? Um, I don't really like it, but they, the kids do. Racco, fun old classic card game. Okie dokie is just a it's kind of a solo card game. Um, my son likes playing it though, it's kind of fun. And probably my two favorite card games right here, No Thanks, which is kind of a pressure luck type game, but really fun and a lot of strategy to that. And on my top 10 list, Love Letter. Can't go wrong with Love Letter. I just taught it to my nephew a few weeks ago, and now every time we get together, we're like, let's play Love Letter. So, yeah. 
It seems like a super cutesy game and it's really cutthroat. <laughs> so yeah. Um, here's a bunch of uh, other games, Five Crowns. I play a lot with my friends, Sleeping Queens, great for younger kids. Cribbage. Um, yeah, I mentioned before I have another cribbage board, but I don't use, I use this. If my sister comes over, we like to play. Sequence, cards, and, but it has a board with it. Try and make a run. Uh, this is super fun. It's Welcome to the Dungeon. This one's Welcome Back to the Dungeon. It has more characters. I do need to get Welcome to the Dungeon. Uh, everybody kind of bids on who's going to go through the dungeon, and then that person sees if they can make it through the dungeon without dying. So yeah, that's fun. Um, just some other card games. Canasta. I play that a lot with my sisters. Uh, Beatitude, Skippo, Family Frenzy, and Elevator, which is sort of a game, um, an old game from Poland, I think, that I've kind of recreated and I try to put on Kickstarter. Super fun, especially in a huge group. And now to the kids' games. We've got Geister Geister Schatzukmeister. Oh, what is it in English? Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters, I think. Uh, Mattel took it over in the United States, but I got it before it came out, so I have the German version, which I speak German, so it works out. Wow, it's an amazing game. We love it, and ours is kind of thrashed because we've used it so much. You're going in and trying to get jewels and put them in your backpack. Yeah, <laughs> it's an amazing game. Okay, Oceanos, you're diving in the depths and making your own cool submarine to get better powers, really fun. Pyramid of Pen Queen is sort of a hidden movement game. I, we played it and the board wasn't working, so I let the company know. Brain Games, and they sent me a new board and we haven't played it since, but it was, it was really fun. Um, trying to get your penguins to get what they need. Slide Quest, I gotta show you that. that. Um, you're trying to get this guy through the maze with four people, yeah. Okay, slap it. It's a slapping game. Super quick. Just trying to slap the cards before your neighbors, but I love the theme of it. Once Upon a Time. It's a storytelling game, so if you have kids that like telling stories or teenagers, yeah, it's a really fun one. Dragonwood. Trying to defeat monsters, but it's really simple so kids can play. Zombie Kids. We haven't played it yet. <laughs> Um, it's a campaign game, so it like expands the more you play, but we haven't tried it. They also have a zombie teens, which I think would be fun. Fairy Tile is a game where you're telling stories. You're trying to get, for example, the prince and the princess to meet, to use that card, and so um, you're moving the prince and the dragon and the princess around the board and trying to make your cards happen, which is pretty cool. My Happy Farm was just a cute little game. I probably won't keep it, but yeah, it was cute. Okay, Last Defense. It's a really fun game where monsters come out and you're trying to defeat them and it uses an app so it tells you when to bring out the monsters. The Magic Labyrinth I actually haven't played yet. I just got it at the thrift store the other day. I got lucky and found it. So I haven't tried it but I know you're trying to pick up items and get through the labyrinth and memorize it which is kind of fun. Looney Quest, similar to Slide Quest but you're drawing. You're drawing on your map to try and avoid try and avoid bombs and pick up keys and things like that. My teenagers love it. Outfoxed, it's sort of like Clue for Kids. And I just love the theme. You're trying to figure out what fox stole the pie. Yeah, what a great game, Outfoxed. Goblet Gobblers is tic-tac-toe extreme. It's even great for adults. Dungeon Academy. Oh, my son loves this game. You're trying to get through the dungeon, draw your way through the dungeon the best you can. Um, yeah, Dungeon Academy, super fun. Okay, on to my junior games. I have Stone Age, but my first Stone Age has really bulky uh, pieces and yeah, just a simplified version, great for kids. Same with Catan. 
same idea as Catan, but for kids. Then I've got some classic games, Guess Who, Connect Four, Twister, you probably all know those. Okay, we've got Catchphrase Junior, Medieval Academy, which is a drafting game where you're visiting an academy and you're trying to <coughs> save the girl in distress and pay alms for the poor and just try and get as many points as you can. Pete the Pirate and Dinosaur Escape are for really young kids. Super fun. Up the River, also fun. <coughs> Labyrinth down here. I have two of them you'll see. One is mine. Uh, my son really loved it and so his friend got him the Pokemon version for his birthday. So we just got the Pokemon version, which I think is at Target right now. Okay, we've got our game of the week, Jamaica. It's sort of a racing pirate game. You're trying to race your ship around and get it there as fast as you can without losing too many points. And then we have too big for other shelves. Yes. <laughs> These are our big games that don't fit anywhere else. Fireball Island. It's a huge island and fireballs are coming down and <laughs> just a super fun game and a really great theme. Loop and Louie, just a little dexterity game. Can't Stop. I have been having this on my list forever and I found this at the thrift store, an older Parker Brothers version with all the stuff in it. So I was really excited about that. I don't think Parker Brother makes it now, but yeah, I was excited to find that. And Otrio, it's sort of like tic-tac-toe for four players, a little bit. I've got the 8-bit box from Yellow. It's got, I don't know if I give that. It kind of looks like video games and you can buy more games to add to it. They're not super great quality games, but they are really fun. We've played a lot of these. Over here we have Arnak, one of our new favorite games, which will probably be on both my husband and my top 10 list. Gloomhaven, it's my son's, and I'm not a dungeon crawl girl, so I'm not a fan. I did play one round of it just to humor my boys, but they do love it. And Scythe, what a beautiful, board game. It's sort of an engine building, area control kind of game. Yeah, really beautiful. Like apples to apples, but better. <laughs> I have played Who Knew, and then I played apples to apples, and I was like, who would play apples to apples when Who Knew is so much better? So I have Who Knew, and I have an actual, it's out of print, but I made my own whole copy of it that's downloadable, so look down in the comments, and you could download the whole game of Who Knew and play it because it's just so amazing. I added some more cards that weren't in the original, but if you can find it at the thrift store, at least to get the tiles and stuff, um, that's the only way to get it now, I think. Snake oil, your salesperson trying to sell, sell some kind of potion or something. Uh, it, cur it cures what ails you. And I have laughed more in this game than any other game. We were laughing so hard at this game. It's super fun. Dixit, a oh, beautiful game where, s so on all three of these, someone is it and picks their favorite thing, right? So that's what these three are. Someone's it and picks their favorite thing. So that's why it's like apples to apples, but better. And Dixit is really beautiful. Okay, party games, the other that don't fit in any other category. Uh, Word Slam, probably my favorite party game. I love this game so much. Two teams that are trying to guess the same word, uh, but you only have piles of words to describe it. Super fun. Paranormal Detectives, there's a ghost that's trying to give you clues to guess how the person died and who killed them and what weapon killed them. Wavelength is a new favorite of mine. You're trying to get your team to guess where the arrow is. Strike is a total luck game. I bring it to my game, board game class so the kids have something to do. If they have a little time left, they like just throwing dice and see if, you know, you can get the dice you need. Total luck, but super easy. Cash and Guns has real foam guns in it. My Ladies board game group loves this game and I like that it's eight players, but it still has a little bit of strategy in it Code names 
probably know this game by now. <laughs> uh, it's really popular where you're trying to get your team to guess words. Detective Club. Everybody gets clues except one person. So it's sort of a lie, uh, social deduction lying game, but the detectives try and figure out who the liar is. Up here I've got trophies, which is just a really fast little game I play sometimes at the end of my board game class that we can try and just have a little filler game. Just one, it's super popular. I'm not uh, the hugest fan because it's more of an activity than a game, but basically you're giving everybody a clue, but if you give two of the same clues, you have to erase it, so that's fun. Okay, dexterity games. We already talked about pitch car. We got pitch car in the expansion here that we have our trophy for that we play every year. I have funny bones the old game where you have to put the cards in between the bones. Uh, Snafu, that's like a solo game uh, where you try and get the marble through the, the maze. Bounce off, you're trying to make a shape with balls. Dr. Eureka, beakers, trying to get the right balls in the right beakers. And flip ships, which is a game where you are flipping ships to try and bring the mothership down and all the spaceships that are attacking you. Okay, now we are to the roll, flip, and write games. Roll and write, flip and write. I like these because usually a ton of people can play. Um, the first one is Gaunt Shirt and Clever. It's in my top, this is on my top 10. I love this game so much. I think in English, what is it called? That's So Clever? That's So Clever maybe? I don't know, yeah, amazing. And my favorite roll and write. Corinth is a really fun game where you're traveling around and yeah, it's a little more involved of a roll and write, but super fun. Welcome to, you're making your own neighborhood. And welcome to your dream home, your perfect home, but we just call it welcome to. My niece loves this game. She always asks me to bring it over. On tour, uh, I love the theme. You're on a music tour going around the country. Kind of simple, uh, similar to Rolling America where you're going around the country. And both of them you're trying to put the right numbers in the right spots. But I do like On Tour better, I think just because of the theme is so cool. And I got the stuff to play eight player, which is nice. Knock Mall, um, I don't know if there's an English name for this. If it is, I'll put it in the video, but yeah, you're making X's and making sh trying to fill out as much as you can. Yeah, I love that. Kokoro, you're trying to make the best path. Uh, it, I think it's called Avenue, the original one, but I kind of like this theme better. Uh, really fun where you're trying to make a pet, the best paths that you can. And that's Kokoro. Now to some of our favorite games, worker and dice placement games. Okay, so we've got the Grim Forest, which probably should be in the kids section. Wow, it's a beautiful game. You're trying to build houses for the three pigs and they have all the fairy tale characters. Alien Frontiers, you're trying to colonize a planet and you're rolling dice and putting them in different places on the board to get different rewards. Yeah, I love this game. Stone Age, I have the 10th anniversary edition because I love this game and my husband loves me so he got it for me. <laughs> uh, it's like in the Stone Age times and you're putting your workers out to get what rewards you want and yeah, we love it. Next we have Lords of Waterdeep. It's from Dungeons and Dragons but it's and it has all the characters from Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a total Euro game, worker placement. You're putting your people out to get all the resources you want and trying to complete missions, right, from um, the Lord, and you are a Lord of Waterdeep. So yeah, it's pretty fun. And then Raiders, you're sending out your Raiders to raid and get as much loot as you can. Um, yeah, and that is our worker and dice placement section. And then we go to our deduction. Cryptid, I actually haven't played this yet, but basically you're trying to find the creature and everybody has clues to where the creature is, but you have to figure out the clues that the other people have and try and find it first before everybody else. 
stop thief, you have to deduce where the thief is and you use an app and you could hear the thief walking inside or going through a window and yeah, this is really fun. We love this game. Rising 5 is a cooperative game. Everybody's trying to figure out sort of mastermind type jewels, how the jewels go in order and if you do, you win. So yeah. And then the search for Planet X, you're trying to deduce where Planet X is. And you ask the app for clues and yeah, oh, it's an amazing game. Okay, now we're on to bluffing games. We have Pirate's Dice. That's kind of a big box for Pirate's Dice, but it's kind of a cool version where you're trying to guess how much, how many numbers everybody has. It's pretty good bluffing. Spyfall, you are trying to de deduce who the spy is. There's a bunch of different locations and you pick a location and everybody's trying to figure out who the spy is at that location. It's pretty fun. My kids love that game. When I Dream, you're having a dream and some people are trying to help you guess uh, certain things and then uh, some people are trying to make you miss what you're trying to guess. And the Sheriff of Nottingham, you're trying to bluff your way through to get as much items as you can past the Sheriff of Nottingham. That's super fun. Okay, now we're on to party games, acting and drawing party games. Uh, reverse charades. We play this at a lot of our Christmas parties. It's basically charades in reverse, so the whole group is acting out something, like a football touchdown or something, and the one person is guessing. So it's super fun because the whole group gets to act everything out. Telestrations is a drawing game, kind of like telephone when we were kids talking into each other's ear, um, but it's drawing, and yeah, it's not really a game, it's more of an activity, but the kids really like it. Time's up. <laughs> Total Recall. I have some player aids for this, so make sure to look below. Basically, you have some clues. You're trying to get your partner to get as many clues as you can. And then the next round, you play with the same clues again. And then the third round, you play with the same clues again. So everybody's starting to know all the clues. And it gets easier, but then the way to give the clues is harder. Gestures, the old game where you act out stuff and try and beat the timer. And here we go, down to... Oh, Pictomania! In Pictomania, it's kind of like a speed game. You're trying to draw, but you're trying to guess everybody else's drawings at the same time. Okay, here's our campaign legacy games. These are games that keep on adding to every time you play. We've got Charterstone in the white box. And yeah, that's just a really beautiful game. We sat down with it once and then we just haven't gotten back to it. Uh, but my son keeps begging us to get back to it, so yeah. Um, near and Far, just such a beautifully put together game. We need to keep going on that. <laughs> Machi Kuro Legacy. We played through the whole campaign, but my boys thought, but the rounds just got done too quickly after you started getting money, so they wished it was lasted a little bit longer, the rounds. And then Fabled Fruit, you're making fruit juice and you have like eight stacks of cards out. And when one stack runs out, you add a new stack. So every time you play, more stacks are getting added and new powers happen while you're making juice. Yeah, super fun. Okay, we have word games. We have Tackle, which you pick a topic and like appliances and then everybody tries to come up one that starts with a letter. Um, I have paperback, which is a word game, kind of like Dominion, where you're making words and trying to get better letters with better powers. Word on the Street is sort of a party game because you can play with any number of players. Two teams are trying to find words and use as many letters as they can. I play that a lot with F. Um, like big parties and stuff where people don't play games much because you can play with big groups. Scrabble, everybody knows. Probe is an old game um, where you're, it's kind of like Hangman where you're trying to guess the word that somebody else put. So that's always fun. Okay, area control. Risk, I think everybody knows. Locus, 
trying to see if you're you can fill more spaces than anyone else. And now we're on to our engine building games. Machi Kuro and Space Base are pretty much really similar games. Machi Kuro is kind of the simpler version. Um, I like Space Base a little better. There's a little more strategy to it, but they're both really fun. I'd say this is more family style, a little bit more involved, but I, I mean the family can still play it. It's fun. They're both fun games. Splendor, um, super easy. Yeah, everybody loves Splendor. Well, I don't know. I do anyway. <laughs> It's just an easy game to bring out and everybody can play. We just got Terraforming Mars. We got the Ares Expedition because I didn't want to do the more complex regular version of Terraforming Mars and I love this game. So fun engine building, you're terraforming Mars. It usually takes my husband and I like two and a half hours to play because he takes a long time, but I think it's just like an hour game actually. It's a Wonderful World is sort of a drafting game but yeah we love this game wingspan it's both in our top tens we love wingspan getting birds to come to your habitat okay now we're down to the two player games um circle the wagons i just bought the printable version of that oh, it's really fun for two players spirit of the wild really pretty but i think i'll probably get rid of it i it wasn't very memorable Backgammon, Onitama, oh my goodness, if you love chess, but don't, don't want to spend so long, it's a 10 minute chess game. Oh, amazing. Poker Pyramid, it's kind of a simple pyramid, but you're trying to make a poker hand out of it. Stratego, you guys know that, <laughs> I hope. More two player games. Seven Wonders Duel. It's our favorite two-player game. It's both on mine and my husband's top ten. Oh yeah, it's fun. I think I like Seven Wonders better, but I do love Seven Wonders Duel too. It's fun for two players. Tides of Time, it's just a little card Euro game. Jaipur, lots of camels. <laughs> I'm going through quick here. Shovel Truffle, uh, candies and truffles, trying to get the most sets and points. Patchwork. <clears throat> that's in my top 10 for sure. I love patchwork. I play it with my sister all the time. Tons of strategy. Simple but really strategic. Lost Cities and Kahuna. My husband and I play when we go out of town. Um, Lost Cities is pretty thrashed. We've played it so much. Um, yeah, some great two-player games. Raptor. One person is the Raptors and one pe person is the Hunters. And yeah, I love that there's different rules and different ways to win. Santorini, you're building up the town of Santorini and trying to get your guy on top. Yeah, I like that. Santorini, and there's a lot of different special player powers you can add. Just a few more sections here. Bets and bidding. Betting on stuff. Here we go. Wits and wagers. It's a really fun party game, kind of trivia, but you don't really need to know trivia. You just need to guess well. Wits and wagers. Equinox, a beautiful game when you're you're betting on animals to see which ones will survive and hoping the ones you bid on survive. Camel Up, they just came out with a new version, but basically you're bidding on which camel is going to win. Nobody's a camel, but you're bidding on it. And Stockpile, where you're trying to bid on stocks. What are going to be the best stocks for you to buy? Really fun. Okay, our last section, battle games. The first one we have is Brave Rats. It's a short little card kind of battle game where you're battling rats to see who can get the most points. And then down below is Summoner Wars. Um, you can get different factions and you battle each other, see who can kill the other faction. And yeah, it's fun to try the different factions. I'm always trying to be the elves, but I always lose. Dice Throne, as you can tell, we're battling. I got the Samurai and the Gunslinger, but you can get more characters and they battle each other and see who can kill the other person. Oh yeah, it's a really fun one. Smash Up is a card game where you're two different factions and you're trying to, yeah, beat the other people. You can get more and more characters for this, so uh, yeah, my kids really like it. 
villainous. You're a Disney villain and you try and beat the other Disney villains. And now I think they just came out with Avengers, uh, villainous Avengers, so you can be an Avenger villain too. And the last game is Couriers. I actually would get rid of the game. I don't like it that much. I don't like games where there's a lot of words on cards and that's what Quarters is, but my boys won't let me get rid of it. They really love it. So yeah, it's a dice battle game. And there you go. That's my game room.